The Favin test, rabies. We know that your fur family is your family and you're gonna pay the cost, but we don't want you to pay more cost than stress. Kenny moved his pet over here, so he's gonna help us break down all of these steps to moving your pet to Hawaii. We have the steps, the highlights, the main points. If you watch the channel enough, you watch the lives, you've seen Kenny. Kenny moved to Hawaii with two dogs? One dog, one two dog. kids. Oh. <laughs> Which one was more difficult, the kids or the dog? I say it's the dogs. There's, there's, you know, all sarcasm is rooted in truth. <laughs> so what kind of dog do you have? Uh, lab mix, mixed with a mountain cur, which is kind of like a treeing dog. Red coat, little white paws, about 45 pounds. Almost everyone on the team has pets now, except for me, a new advent. So you've always had a dog. Aiden has a dog, Black Lab, Toby. Mahe just got cats. Kenji got cats, our lenders we work with have dogs, everyone's having pets except for me, my son's allergic. But today's video is about moving your pets to Hawaii. We have the steps, the highlights, the main points of moving your pet to Hawaii. Let's get into it. This video is a, a very niche one. Not everyone has a pet they're moving to Hawaii. Those of you who do, uh, do me a favor, go to coreteamhawaii.com, fill out the form in the bottom if you are moving to Hawaii and have a real estate need such as buying a home and or selling a home on the mainland. If you don't have a real estate need, we're gonna work on getting a PDF document put together and just having it downloadable on our site so you'll be able to download our Moving Pets to Hawaii guide. And you can check that out in the description of this video as well. Hopefully by the time this video is released. I feel like tests and shots are, where, are the yeah. starting point. That's what's gonna consume most of the time and the appointments and getting into your vet. As we were prepping for this video, the mm -hmm. tests and the shots weren't like the most invigorating thing. No. It's really the starting point though. It is. If this is wrapped around chatting with somebody about making that move, um, and I know they have pets, I'm, I'm usually just gonna start by asking, what was the last time you had a rabies shot? Rabies is the big one, right? It, it is, because Hawaii is a non-rabies state. Fabin test is an antibody test that also gives the Department of Ag an understanding of what the, the penetration effective. or the absorbency, the efficacy, efficacy. of the rabies shot. Okay, so rabies shot, you need yeah. two, correct? You need two. Or the, the pet will need two. The, the pet needs to have two rabies shots on record and the last one having been it needs to be current. Rabies shots, as I understand it, can be either one year or two years. Um, it just depends. The vet suggests or recommends that based on the, the type of dog, size so like of dog. So like a 10 year old, a 10 year old dog who got rabies early on, yeah. they're gonna need a refresh, they're gonna need a tighter? Yeah, tighter okay. is uh, kind of like a booster shot. So you'll, as you're going through a checklist or if you're working with us, that's a term that's gonna come up. The Fabin test will tell you whether you're good to go or not and a tighter than is needed um, as a booster. The rabies shots have to be more than 30 days apart. Okay. So if there's only one and you have to get another, they can't be any closer than 30 days apart. If I'm on the main line, my pet has never had a rabies shot. Yes. I'm gonna have to plan for a rabies shot today this next one I'm gonna get is 31 days from now. Correct. And then I'm gonna to have to wait another 30 days before a the Favin. Favin. Cause the Favin gives you that efficacy of the rabies shots so that the rabies shots need time to absorb and settle into the bloodstream. Okay. These are rabies shots or vaccines. To recap, one rabies shot, Third, no sooner than 30 days later, you get another rabies shot. If your pet has already had rabies shot, you can, before the Favin test, get a tighter. Well, here, we were talking about this. I think what you should do is probably talk to your vet and say, yes. hey, you know the Favin test? Given that my pet, Bingo, had his shots a year ago, 10 years ago, do you think a tighter would be necessary in order for us to pass the Favin? And I would take the, pet, the vet's advice on that. Yep. So if they're like, no, no, they just got it you know, a year ago, like, I'd, I'd be willing to bet you're gonna pass the Favin. Then probably don't do this because there's another 30 days attached to this. Correct. So depending on your timeline, whenever you finish the two rabies shot or the up or the tighter refresh shot yep. or your booster, booster, the tighter booster, there's gonna be a 30 day period until you take the Favin. Yeah. So the and pet takes the Favin test. These results can take up to 60 days to get back. Okay. And this is something that Department of Ag here in Hawaii needs to see and approve before they'll prepare documents for you and, and have those ready for a traveling crate for the dog. In a best case scenario, the rabies shots have been done, they're current, you just do a Favin and you've got 
something like 30 to 60 days wait for those results and they all come up clean that's sunshine and rainbows everything's yeah. as easy as it gets most people it doesn't take 60 but right. you should prepare for 60 prepare right? for 60 the doomsday that that's you're, about as long as it's going to take they give caution on the ag website here as you're doing a little bit of research that there can be delays it's got to go out to specific labs that are approved by hawaii and it can take anywhere from one to two months and um, your vet probably knows so mm -hmm. you tell your vet send our data to this lab you know kansas, kansas university mm -hmm. or whatever yeah there used to only be three there may be more now it looks like there's a few more i don't remember when we moved foxy out that uh, the University of Auburn was one that's there on the list is approved now. Okay. Um, your vet has to be approved by the state of Hawaii as well. So oh, you would definitely, you would want to look at the um, ag site and it says approved vets. So it's Kansas State University, University of Auburn, the Veterinarians Clinic of America, VCA headquarters. I believe they're in Kansas City or St. Louis. Okay. Don't quote me. Those are the three that I'm aware of. It seems like there's a few more out there. My recommendation is the veter Veterinarians Clinic of America, even if that's not your normal pets vet, to consider doing that, because that's the, that's the conglomerate, right? Okay, all right, so another recap. Two rabies shots, if your rabies shots are old, get, you may get a tighter shot, depending on your vet's recommendation. Irregardless, once you finish the rabies portion, there's gonna be a 30-day wait until your pet can take the Favin test. When they take the Favin test, Keep in mind, it can be up to 60 days to get results, mm -hmm. and it needs to be an approved vet lab. clinic and sending it to an approved lab. Correct. This is the biggest, most time, this is why people say you have to plan ahead. Yep. This is the time consuming part, right? This is why puppies aren't allowed, because they're, they're not old enough to have even started this process, and you have to allow them to grow up a little bit. Just real quick, like specific current note, I just spoke to a client this morning that did the Favin test. It's been three weeks okay. and they still haven't gotten it. So just to give you a, um, an immediate scope on what we're talking about. And you, it seemed like you had uh, Terry with the Great Danes. Yep. You have these clients. Somehow you get the pet clients. I don't know. Whose fault is that? I, it, it's not a, I don't assign them intentionally yeah, for no. you to have the pet clients. But yeah. I love it. I'm a dog lover and I, yeah. I love helping out. But once that's all done and you have everything you need, there's a form to fill out. And I'm going to switch colors yeah. to put this up. Okay. So you have to apply for, it's not a permit, but it's a it's the, agri, the Hawaii Department of Agriculture yeah. they, request form. One of the boxes to fill out is when is your expected arrival date. Okay. So that would maybe be the only outlier that I would say maybe premature to just throw it out there as soon as you get your orders or your plans to move. Department of Agriculture request form yep. is gonna be required to get your pet here. Correct. And you're gonna need that in hand when you fly, assuming Correct. you're flying with the pet, right? And you need a copy on the crate. If you have a small enough dog that can fly with you in cabin and it fits under the seat in front of you and it's, uh, you would need, it would need to be a pretty small dog. Like Lola. Like Lola. Yeah, um, yeah. That, then you can just carry it with you. But these documents actually need to be on the crate Okay. Because the dog is going to come out of cargo, whether they're flying with you and you're on an airline that that offers that, or if you fly them separately in um, a specific cargo plane that flies overnight, and it's a little bit, a little bit more humane, if I was to be honest. That I think a vet would maybe recommend that. But okay. You, you got options. Um, the get, documents have to be on the crate. The documents have to be on the crate. They're okay. going to go separately through AG, and then you're going to go through and pick up your bags and then you'll meet up with the dog and ag. So the docs have to be verified as a part of an inspection before the dog's released. There are two other things that are time sensitive, which are the flea and tick mm -hmm. and the health exam. Yeah, as I understand it, the flea and tick has to be done 14 days or less from okay. date of travel okay. or date of arrival. Flea and tick 14. Is that how you do it? 14 That's days? That's because it's pointing to the last now. I always get this. Leave me a comment. Do you have that committed to memory? 14. Less than 14. Flea and tick. Flea and tick. Flea and tick. Less and than 10, health exam. Health exam. So these are the time, time sensitive things. Yep. You've gotten your two rabies shots and or the tighter booster. You've waited 30 days. 
you've gotten the Favin test, your approved vet has sent it to the approved lab, you get your results back, and oh, and also this Favin test, 36 months is the threshold, right? Right, if you're an amazing pet owner and you're up to date with everything, you've had two rabies shots, and you did a Favin test because maybe you thought you were gonna be traveling I think somewhere that's the most before. Likely. More likely they thought they were moving to Hawaii, didn't, and now yeah. they have orders, or now they're moving. Yeah. Plans got postponed. All of this within 36 months. Right. And they so you, will accept uh, the approved or the, uh, the pass on this test up to 36 months back. And so you've done that, mm -hmm. gotten all of this done, and then you go do your flea and tick exam, you do your health exam. Within this time, you would have already scheduled travel plans. So yeah. we're not gonna like interject it on the board, but let's talk about travel plans. I'm gonna switch to another color. Basically three options for your pet to travel. They yeah. can travel underneath the seat in front of you. They can travel under the plane that you're on, yep. or they can travel in a cargo plane specific to that where in which the charge is based on crate size. Correct. So underneath the seat in front of you, what's the size requirement? Uh, they have to fit in a personal bag size. So don't think carry-on, think your backpack or your neck pillow and, and what you're allowed to bring and put underneath the seat in front of you at your feet. And they, to be super nuanced and specific, the rules in the ag, um, like FAQ, okay. say that the dog has to be able to stand and turn around inside of their traveling bag if you will so under the seat basically is what you want to make sure of it's about the size of a purse so lola is a good example um think teacup or think mini mini chihuahua that that size not by weight fit under the seat that next size up is where you would have an option for the airlines that allow to go under the plane with you with your luggage down below there is a there's a max size threshold on that so like a yeah. great dane is right. not going to get approved for that right if you have a rottweiler if you have a cane corso a great dane yeah. a bull mastiff you're you're really kind of relegated to that third option which is going to be, gonna be flying separately so this is more convenient yeah. for you of course pets with you mm -hmm. people with their fur family they want they want them close as possible 100%. they want minimum distance and time mm -hmm. but you got to consider what time of year you're traveling what the right. climate's going to be like so what like what about that yeah if it's too cold or too hot um specifically what i understand with the moving of foxy for us when we talk to our vet they said if if you were thinking of having foxy fly under the plane with you it's really not healthy it's not a good environment for them it's super hot confined and there's minimal air circulation the the cargo hull under the plane in a passenger plane is built to hold suitcases not live animals yeah so we went with that third option and the difference there is you're buying a plane ticket for your dog and they're going on a plane that is just a cargo plane because the cost for option number two the pet to fly underneath your plane you're adding 150 bucks yeah. or something like 200 maybe 200, 200 bucks. bucks yep that's whereas the cargo plane we had a client with a great dane like a yeah. thousand bucks per dog he per has dog. two it's a convenience it's certainly safer more um humane more comfortable it creates some logistical stuff with not necessarily your testing but when does the dog arrive when do we arrive and does that create a need for them to be held at a quarantine station or can we be there in time to pick them up from the airport and still do that immediate airport release version is, so under the seat is there even a fee I, I think they do charge you like 75 bucks or something like that okay. there's a there is a I'm going to put a question mark because yeah. we don't for yeah. sure know. I could see it being free. I could see it being a fee. Yeah. Probably depends on the airline. Yeah. Which airlines allow this? That's probably subject to change too, yeah. right? So yeah. the airline has to be, I don't know what the official word, but like partnered or signatory to the Hawaii Department mm -hmm. of Ag uh, program and process. So when you're booking your flight, you need to consider that. Right. If you're military and the travel office is booking it for you, you need to make sure they consider that. Right. Pretty sure Hawaiian Airlines does and will always do yep. it. Alaska has just uh, acquired Hawaiian and they yep. used to do it. They still do. So I'm confident in three. I United, can give you I would think, because you, this is one of United's main hubs. Like United is like yep. the most common airline to fly to the mainland. They, I don't know. They're, they're on my question mark side. I kind of did some research and prep for this video. 
they seem to have a little more gray area, but the three that come clear are Hawaiian, Southwest, and Alaska. Okay. Are those a number three option or that's a totally different thing? Totally different yeah, thing. That's totally different thing, right? Right. So these two... Hawaii and Alaska really are kind of the same thing now. At this point, right? Yeah. Subject to change. Subject yeah. to change. So ask the airline first. Yeah. Let's talk about the cargo plane option and right. why that may even be a more humane option. But we're not yeah. here to tell people what is humane and what to do. Yeah. But just a consideration. Yep, yeah, it's an option. No passengers. You're, it's it's a in, insulated and air circulated uh, cargo plane that only has crates. It's probably like and flying military space age. It, it really does feel like that. That yeah. when we dropped Foxy off, it was go around by the FedEx and UPS hangars. Yeah. And this is where our warehouse is. You drop your pet off here at about 10.30 p.m. It's an overnight flight because yeah. it's cooler at that time. So that's part of yeah. the humane part. Um, and they, they check you in, they look at your docks, they say, yeah, this is in the right place. And then they just say, okay, our arrival time is 5 a.m. Ag opens at eight daily and they start their inspections and they request that if, you're, if your pet is flying ahead of you, that you try to schedule your arrival time. I was just thinking that. It, usually, it, it does, it creates a little bit of a logistical. Do pet owners often, like one spouse flies in advance, one fly, stays back with Foxy, and do, do yeah. they split like that? Or? Yeah, that's been my client experience for sure. A lot of your clients, have, yeah. our, our yeah. your clients have yeah. done that. There's an ag process, irregardless, whether mm -hmm. they flew cargo or flew on your plane, there's gonna be an ag process. Mm -hmm. And if you had messed any of this up or don't have the right documentation, then, yeah. If you don't have the right yeah. documentation, there's yep. going to be a holding a quarantine fee, right? There's two options, and then there's kind of the, well, it, it got messed up, so we're, they're going to be at the quarantine station. So there's a, an immediate release at the airport. That's going to be your, what most, I think, pet owners are going to want to do. Okay. Um, it's 185 bucks. That's as updated as I have. I checked the website last night and it says updated right on it. So we can assume that to be current, 185 bucks. The dog or the cat is gonna go through ag and have an inspection done. They're gonna check documents. They're gonna check the pet out. You're gonna go through it. You're gonna get your check bags. You're gonna get your rental car situation. And hopefully that times up pretty well, but they say expect one to two hours. Irregardless of how you do it, if you were the most on it person, yeah. Pets and humans are gonna go separately Correct. Through, through their own TSAs, right? Correct. This is TSA for pets, all right? So humans and <laughs> pets separate. One to two hours for inspection and reviewing documents to make sure that we're accurate. Oh. Little side nuance, if, if you take an option where you're taking a cargo plane option, um, the specific example for me is uh, Pacific Air Cargo is who we used only out of LAX. We happen to live in LA when we PCS, so lucky us. Foxy arrived about 5 a.m. They have a holding station at the airport, so Foxy never left the airport. Okay. And they asked us. Sorry, at home. I'm gonna put okay. it for them, Pacific Air Cargo LAX. Yep. She arrived at about 5 a.m. They have a holding station at the airport and they start their uh, inspections at eight o'clock. Okay. And they stop at five, but the last inspection is between 3.30 and 4.30. So if you are flying separately and your flight doesn't arrive until four o'clock, you're they're they're going to have the dog go to the quarantine station. So we we want to mm. try to be there as early in the morning as possible. They recommend trying to arrive around 10 a.m. so that they have time to do the inspection. You arrive. Yeah, everything's fine. Here you go. Here's your dog. I see. Next step would be to consider. So this is the immediate release okay. version, right? Um, there's a five days or less option, which probably is the, hey, we thought we did everything right, but something was wrong on the paperwork. Okay. And we need to call the vet back in on the mainland and we need to get it corrected. So so this, but to release your dog is gonna cost $185 yep. regardless, right? 185 So if you did everything right, a few hours and 185 bucks, you're in your rental car Correct. or whatever. Correct. If you didn't do everything right, then a minimum of a five day quarantine, whether you take a day, right. they're gonna charge you five days at $15 a day. It was $14.30. Four Let's call it 15, <laughs> so $75. Yep. Uh, if you mess anything up. So that number goes from 185 to 
250, 270s. Okay. Uh, and then you would have to go pick your dog up from the quarantine station, which is in Halaba. So not the airport, but Correct. then the quarantine station. Yeah. If you made it here, something went wrong. We're at the quarantine station. We're about 11 minutes away from the airport, not too far. Something went wrong. Favin test didn't get in at the right time. Paperwork wasn't right. Something needs to get corrected with your vet back on the mainland. We're here for you. The address is linked in the description below. We're also gonna add that checklist so that you don't end up here. But we thought that it would be worth it to show you just in case. If something's wrong up here with docs, they're they're gonna say sorry we need to get this corrected here's where your dog is going i know this seems like a lot it is hawaii is a protected isolated place we're not quite galapagos islands where you can't even bring your own shoes but a little bit of that and um we respect you know living here with all all of the advantages and not having snakes what else do we not have not having rabies <laughs> not having rabies yeah like we we respect the process although it's it can be a bit much this is not a skippable thing so even Correct. if you flew with your pet you have this little six pound dog yeah. this is not a skippable process so so make sure you account for that none of it's skippable yeah. we skipped the one little thing here what 65 bucks Oh, 65 bucks. So we're gonna add Well, that. we're gonna, yeah, we yeah. can quantify all yeah. of this later. So mm. let's, let's bring up some miscellaneous. No puppies. And it's not that we hate puppies. Love puppies. We love puppies. It's, it's this. that this whole process, I'm sure you can't give a puppy a rabies shot when right. it comes out of the womb. There's, there's right. some delay, plus all of this. It, your puppy won't be a puppy anymore by the time you get all this done is the point. The ag website says six months. Six months. Is a kind of a minimum age for pets to have pass achieved, this process. Have achieved this. Yeah. And that's probably aggressive. I would, yeah, probably, I would think that's a little, yeah. That's, that's probably aggressive. So no puppies, microchip. It's not just a nice thing to have, but they want you, they tell you to microchip your dog. Right. Or your cat for that matter. Yep. I would just, I would also say documents, documents, documents because if you show up to the airport and you don't have your request form, you don't have any of this stuff, um, you're kind of SOL. And now you're gonna have to quarantine your dog. Yeah. And it's unfortunate. Your dog already had to go through the flying and, yeah. and this whole process and now you're quarantining them even extra. So yeah. if you're anything like me, have your wife handle it and not yourself. <laughs> there are pet moving companies. We're gonna talk about pricing. So let's just talk about that. The agriculture process alone, it costs you 185 bucks. If you mess up, maybe another 75. Yep. The Favin test, 100 bucks. The lab test, 50 bucks. The flea, the tick, the health exam, probably another 100 bucks. Maybe up to $100 to microchip your dog. And depending on travel arrangements, it might cost you little to nothing if you have a little pet, or it might be up to $1,000 per pet to get your pet over here. Can you get your dog on the plane without any of this having happened, and then just let them sit in quarantine for months here? Let's, I mean, say, that's not the, let's say we're just not, uh, this video doesn't land anywhere and you don't ask the question, nobody gives you the suggestion, and you just decide to move to Hawaii, Yeah. and you have Lola. Yeah. You're yeah, gonna, because to get, the, to get on the cargo plane, they would have had to, yeah. like you're gonna be in front of all this. Correct. But if you travel with your pet, get off the plane, right. and you're like, what agriculture and, yeah. you know, process? The, the surprise, a negative surprise is going to be, here's our quarantine station. We're going to take your dog there. Yeah. And then you need to call your vet and get all of this done. It's a minimum, really, I think, 60. minimum 60, probably realistically more like 120 days. 120 days? Because you've got to call. The logistics of, well, let's assume you, they had rabies. Okay. Then you start with the Favin test. Yep. That's 60, 90. 60, 90, yeah. Yeah, because you've got to have that done does the quarantine station do that or do you have to have somebody yeah. come in for uh, that you hire to do that i bet you there are vets on island that specialize in traveling over there mm -hmm. to give shots and it probably is not cheap yeah dog's in great shape the rabies and everything's up to date your this is your minimum start um and then so these three things will have to happen at a minimum and it, we know that this is taking no less than three weeks with a current client of ours that I spoke to this morning. Yeah. And then another couple of things that have to be done as well. So hopefully this is helping and getting the message out there and in, in yeah. time to make it work.
We'll make a checklist. We'll have it available in PDF uh, in the description of this video. I'll work with our web, our web designer to get it downloadable on our site as well. We're not one of these real estate teams that tricks you. Like we have all these, have ChatGPT create something that's just something for you to click so that we can get your email and then go through this process of bothering you. Uh, we don't do that for multiple reasons. We don't want that done to us. Um, we don't think it's efficient to chase a ton of people at like a low 1% or less conversion rate who mostly don't want to talk to us. Um, but if you enjoy this video, you enjoy the team, uh, you enjoy this channel, make sure to go to coreteamhawaii.com. Uh, fill out the contact form at the very bottom. Let us know your real estate needs. And uh, if, you're, if you're just coming, you're renting, you're staying in military housing, or you're going to be here for 18 months to work on a construction project and you're bringing your pet, something like that, then we're happy this helps. And uh, say hi if you see us in Costco. Absolutely, please <laughs> yeah. say hi. My paw was terrible. It was better than mine. I looked up the, uh, this other thing and it was kind of like, Kenny's is better. <laughs>